All right, so Ryder Rip, who you may have heard of, has done an analysis of Yuga Labs founders and has made the allegation that they're just trolling uh, all of us because they're really Nazi racist, white supremacists, and uh, the Board Ape Yacht Club is essentially a trolling mechanism on white supremacy. So you can go look at the video. I'll put it down in the description if you want to take a look at it. This video is not going to analyze all of that, whether or not it's true. It's up to you. What I want to talk about today is the lawsuit that was filed by Yuga Labs, which owns the Board Ape Yacht Club, against Ryder Rip alleging trademark infringement because Ryder Rip has basically copied all the Bored Apes, created a different version of the Bored Ape Yacht Club, used BAYC, used Bored Ape, and used the images of all the Bored Apes for his new NFT project, which he launched on OpenSea. And you're going to see a ton of information, news, commentary on this new collection. And a lot of it's going to deal with the intellectual property issues surrounding that launch. Does Ryder Rip have the right to use BAYC? Well, Yuga Labs has filed a trademark for BAYC. Can Ryder Rip use Bored Ape as part of his collection? Well, Yuga Labs has filed a trademark on that particular term and some very similar terms. So what is going to happen here and why has Yuga Labs only brought trademark claims? You would have probably thought why not bring copyright claims, right? He's copied the exact images of the Bored Apes for his collection. Well, this goes back to another video that I did called Do You Own Your Bored Ape? And it's an analysis of the terms of service and the license agreement between Yuga Labs and the initial buyers and potentially subsequent buyers of Bored Apes. Now, Bored Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs says you own your ape completely, but then they have license limitation uh, language in the in the terms of service, which weren't even linked from the sale. Uh, so there's a huge legal issue around what you actually bought if you bought a board ape. What did Yuga preserve? Do you really own your board ape? Did Yuga, in fact, uh, only license you your board ape? Did you receive an assignment ownership of that board ape or did you receive a license of the board ape? Well, we have a clue here because in the lawsuit filed by Yuga Labs, they only brought trademark claims, no copyright claims. And the obvious reason why that might be is because uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs, doesn't have the copyright to those board apes anymore. They were passed on, assigned, to the Bored Ape purchasers. If they did believe that they still owned the copyright and had only licensed those Bored Apes, then in fact, they would have brought copyright claims against Ryder Rip. They did not. They only brought trademark claims and unfair competition claims. So first point is, we now know that Yuga Labs has put another marker down on the fact that you do own your board ape completely, that it's an assignment of the copyright. You can do whatever you want with it. Still hasn't been litigated in the courts, but this is just another indicator that that was the intent of Yuga Labs when they launched the project. Second thing, these trademark infringement claims that they brought on BAYC and Board Ape raise a issue. Board Ape Yacht Club, Yuga Labs did not file for trademark registration when they launched the project because they didn't know it was going to be so successful, right? So they probably didn't even get attorneys involved in that. So in the fall of last year, six months after the launch of the project, they started to try and register trademarks, including BAYC and Bored Ape. Well, are those trademarks going to be challenged? They certainly could be challenged because Bored Ape may be generic. It may not be a trademark. Does Bored Ape indicate the source of ownership? of uh, that those board apes is it a brand like nike or is it more like kleenex it identifies the description of the good rather than identifies source and origin of the company that is associated with the good personally i think there's a pretty good argument that board ape should not be registered that the uh the term board ape describes the product rather than identifies the brand. It's more like my shoe, 
I need to be able to use the word shoe. No one can trademark the word shoe. Board ape? Maybe. BAYC is a different trademark issue. With BAYC, a lot of the apes have BAYC on their apparel. And so when Yuga Lab said you own your image completely, well, what does that mean with regards to BAYC? Did they also assign trademark rights or potentially waive their ability to claim trademarks over BAYC? We shall see. These are going to be challenged in this lawsuit, no doubt, brought by Yuga Labs against Ryder Rip. So we don't know who Ryder Rip is going to get to represent him yet, but hopefully uh, there'll be a good IP attorney and they'll be able to, to, to start to make some of these defenses. Now, I have no horse in the race. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I just am really appreciative that these issues are finally going to get litigated. For six, eight months now, I've been asking the question, do you own your board ape? I've started to ask the question over the last three months, is it appropriate for Yuga Labs to, to register trademarks for Board Ape and BAYC? They will now be litigated. So number one, we might get some legal clarity on the trademark issues for the Board Ape Yacht Club project. That's great news for the ape owners, probably even for Yuga Labs, right? Uh, certainly for the rest of us. The other thing that is going to be very interesting is um, whether or not there's ever a defamation claim brought by Yuga Labs against Ryder Rip. The first thing I was looking for when I re read the complaint, which I'll link in the description, and by the way, go ahead and subscribe because we'll be doing a lot of shows here about this very issue because it's going to set precedent in ways that uh, are going to affect the entire industry. This is the biggest thing that's happened in the NFT space in terms of legal issues. But what I was looking for in that complaint was defamation claims, business defamation. We do more business defamation stuff than just about anyone. And Yuga Labs could bring a defamation, business defamation, defamation per se claim against Ryder Rip if, in fact, Ryder Rip's allegations were factually untrue. Why did Yuga Labs not file any sort of defamation claim in this complaint? Now, there's lots of possible reasons that might be strategic, may or may not be an indication that the allegations are actually true. But if you're a business and you've been disparaged and it's untrue, you know, your one of the possible course of action is to go ahead and bring a lawsuit for business defamation and to have all of that defamatory material removed from the internet. That hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened in this lawsuit. Some people will certainly believe that that's an indication that Yuga Labs can't make out a defamation claim. They can't actually prove that the allegations are untrue. That maybe the allegations by Ryder Rip are in fact true. Now, not saying that's the case. That's one of the possibilities here. The other possibility strategically is that Yuga Labs, if they had brought a defamation claim, might in fact be subject to, would in fact be subject to discovery, which means all of the factual allegations about white supremacy, about the founders, about their affiliations, about their beliefs, all of that is going to be subject to depositions, all of that is going to be subject to discovery requests under sworn testimony. It may be that <laughs> that Yuga Labs can't take the risk that in those uh, depositions, in those document productions, that it turns out, in those third-party subpoenas, that it turns out that in fact uh, one or more of the founders is a white supremacist, that this was a uh, effort to troll the internet, to troll the world, uh, uh, you know, by, uh, by offering up this project which would become popular which would essentially contain white supremacist symbolism, ideals, and values. So, did Yuga Labs essentially punt on the defamation claim because they don't want to be subject to discovery? Time will tell. This is all really fascinating. We've got copyright issues. Apparently, the Board Ape Yacht Club owners, the Board Ape owners, are the ones that own the copyright. They could bring a lawsuit against Ryder Rip for copyright infringement. One or more of those Board Ape Yacht Club owners could be 
the person could be the people that own the copyright that could be tested in court so if they were to bring a claim against Ryder Rip the first defense would be they're not the copyright owner someone would have to decide the copyright issue once and for all super exciting for someone like me who loves this stuff who practices law in this area right you've got the defamation issues the possibility of actually establishing the truth and veracity of the allegations made by Ryder Rip could a board ape owner bring a declaratory judgment action as to whether or not those allegations are true maybe we could actually get to the bottom of the allegations by Ryder Rip as part of the litigation which is going to be uh, which has started and which is probably going to expand are the trademarks that Yuga Lab has claimed in BAYC and Board Ape valid they're not registered yet I don't believe they're still in the process is someone going to step in and challenge those trademarks? Well, it's certainly going to be challenged in court. And the USPTO, even if it allows registration, is not the final word on whether or not you win as a trademark owner of the courts are. So you could get registered and you could still have a court determine that your trademark is invalid. All of this is great news for the industry. Here's the big takeaway. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the bell. But here's the big takeaway, and we'll be talking about this a lot in the future. The industry is upside down on IP rights. These projects are not typically uh, uh, identifying their IP, getting the IP in place, licensing the IP to NFT buyers. The NFT buyers don't know what it is they're receiving in terms of the digital image. And I've done a ton of videos on what do you own on the difference between the token and the digital asset, the linked digital asset. So go ahead and take a look at those, right? All the stuff we've been talking about for the last year and a half is all coming to a head. That means the industry is gonna get educated about IP. The industry is gonna see this lawsuit and get educated about AP. This is amazing turn of events for the industry because the number one thing that has to happen in the NFT space from the legal point of view is these projects need to get it together and get their IP lined up and once it's lined up, figure out what their licensing or assignment model is going to be. I'm Enrico. Stay tuned right here, man, on the NFT Lawyer YouTube channel because we are going to have a tremendous amount of fun over the next couple of weeks as we dig into all these issues. We educate, we elevate, and we try and bring this community together around IP uh, rights and education. See you next time.